International Programmers Day. I'm Sylvia Spiva, Cisco Developer Community Manager. Today we have a super fun Cisco chat for you. This is a family gathering. We might even go a little telenovela. It's not going to be in Spanish, but we're going to give you that Spanish flavor. And let me tell you who we have with us. We have a great cast, and we're going to start with our friend David. Hola, oui, tudo bem? Hello, everybody. My name is David Fernandez. I'm a programmability architect for the U.S. partner organization, and I cover the U.S. Very excited to be here. Next, we're going to go to our friend in Costa Rica, Jose. Hey, nice to meet you all. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm the chief innovation officer at Altus, a company, a Cisco partner based in Costa Rica that basically transitioned from doing the uh, old uh, Cisco just reselling hardware to doing more programmability. So I'm very excited to talk about that experience now. And next up, we're going to go to Peru. Hi, I am Cynthia Oshiro. I am a program manager from Cisco Networking Academy, this corporate social responsibility program impacting millions of people around the world. Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Esquivel. I am, I'm also from Costa Rica, but this time I am here from Peru, working and participating on the events that we have of actualization to our instructors. So I'm very happy to be here, very happy to be part of uh, the Networkers Day. It's very important for us now. Thank you. And for those of you who have been following what DevNet has been doing in Latin America, you probably already know Cynthia. She is one of our hardest working members of the extended DevNet family. So Cynthia, I want to come back to you and I want you to give us all the details about how you're celebrating International Programmers Day and what is happening in Lima today. Yes, so we are today with Jose Pablo and nearly 100 instructors here in Lima, Peru. Uh, we are having our main event from Cisco Networking Academy called Academy Day Peru. Uh, we are in uh, one of our academies, training instructors, presenting our program updates, and sharing experiences, sharing their best, best practices around Peru in different parts of our country, and also getting excited about all the changes. They are really aware of the changes here, our certification. I'm very happy because they are uh, seeing this opportunity to certificate in DevNet Associate. So you mentioned the changes that are coming to Networking Academy, especially around certifications. So before we get into the new certifications, including DevNet. Let's get some of the history of Networking Academy from you, Jose Pablo. Sure, excellent. We'll be more than happy. So actually, NetAcad started in the year 1997. It's been almost 20 years with this great program where we have been training almost 3 million people around the world. So this is an amazing thing that we are doing. This is It's great to have a lot of students that are actually now participating in great projects, in great companies, doing a, a, a excellent work. So uh, the, the program has been evolving a lot during all those years. So we started as a networking program. We started uh, training people in CCNA. That was our first course, uh, obviously. Uh, and with that, we transitioned during the course of the years to start bringing other technologies and other things that we understand that the market was needing, that the, uh, the, the people were needing for jobs. So I joined the program actually uh, back in the year uh, 2000 to start uh, actually the, the year that the program started there in Costa Rica. Uh, I work for the uh, Tecnológico of Costa Rica, the university where I study electronic engineering. And there we had the opportunity to uh, start as an instructor training people and now, uh, uh, on the last 12 years, I joined NetAcad, uh, or Cisco Networking Academy, to work as the technical manager for Latin America. So that gave me uh, the experience and the possibility to look of what's going on, what's happening in the region, what's happening in Latin America, what are the needs of the market, and what are some of the things that are happening here in the region that are the needs for the growth that we need 
uh, to drive to drive it forward and to make sure that we can actually jump into the new generation uh, and the things that we need. Today, we are sending a very powerful message to our instructors. We are telling them that they need to be programmers. They they don't. It's not now. It's not necessarily just to be a network infrastructure engineering. You need to be a programmer to be a successful uh, networking engineer. So so we are doing that, starting with our instructors, so that they can start sending these messages out to our students. So we started uh, uh, in the in the years before adding courses like Python essentials. Now we also have the emerging technology workshops that are uh, uh, some small programs that we are bringing uh, so that students can start using those materials to start getting ideas of how all this new generation and how these new changes are coming into the industry and how they can start learning a, a Python, how they can apply those knowledge into what they do in their day-to-day -day job. Uh, working as a networking engineering. And actually yesterday we were doing the first emerging technology workshop on a model driven programmability. And it was a very, very successful training. Uh, and we had a, 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 an excellent a group of instructor trainers from Peru. I want to introduce one of the, of the instructors that were part of the, of the training uh, to come here just to give a, a very short message of what was that about and, and the importance of that for their stu students. So please, uh, if you can join me for a second, um, Ivan, uh, uh, Ivan Galarza from Arequipa, Peru. So he was, he's one of our instructor trainers, not only in CCNA, also he's a cybersecurity expert uh, here in the, in, in the country. And he's uh, just talk a little bit about what was the workshop yesterday and, and why it, this is important for your students moving forward. Ivan. Hello. Um... I think that this uh, training is very important for uh, all instructors in, in Peru, but it's a, a new, new challenge for the, um, uh, the, the, the teaching in, the, in this course of uh, uh, CCNA. Uh, it's um, a great opportunity for our academies to um, um, take this um, concepts and uh, carry on um, our students is uh, a, a great opportunity for uh, our academies, instructors and community uh, uh, take this concept and uh, carry in, in, the, in our course. Excellent. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. I love seeing that. I mean, I've been with DevNet for three years, and to see a networking academy instructor wearing a Cisco DevNet shirt, can someone take a picture of that and, and tweet it to me? Because that's that's fantastic. That shows that a lot of work is really um, you know coming to fruition, and we have been wanting to take the DevNet message to networking academy and to everyone around the world. So thank you, thank you so much, Ivan, Jos, Cynthia. Jose Pablo, this is amazing. I want more pictures. I want pictures of the event happening in Lima today. So after Excellent. you go through Networking Academy, after you graduate from Networking Academy, what do you do? What does that do for your career? I think it's time to go talk to one of our most famous Networking Academy graduates and um, a good friend of mine. And because he's such a good friend, I'm wearing the Costa Rica soccer jersey right now. So. Aguante Costa Rica, Jose Bogarín. I love the shirt, Sylvia, who gave it to you. <laughs> love the shirt. <laughs> so, well, yeah, um, as Sylvia said, I, I, I graduated from, Dev, from Medacat. Oh, well, we have, we, we're having a technical difficulty, I think. We're just seeing your chair. We're not seeing you, Jose, so uh, we okay. want to see your face, not your empty chair. Okay, you're seeing me right there, now? Now I see you. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So yeah, I, I um, basically started the Netacad program probably 18 years ago. So it was it's been a journey, and I'm really happy to be here uh, sharing this Cisco live chat with Jose Paulo because actually Jose Paulo was one of my instructors back then, which is it's pretty cool to be <laughs> to be here with him. Um, my my mentors in this in this whole whole. Uh, networking world where actually Jose Paulo, one of the other founders of, of my, the company that I work with, it's uh, Rafael, 
and my brother Alonso, which was actually also an instructor alongside Jose Paulo and Rafael, and used me as the guinea pig when we were doing testing and labs. So when they were actually going ahead and rehearsing the, the content that they were going to give in the Net Networking Academy, they were using me as a guinea pig to, you know, drive, uh, do a test run of those labs. So it's been a good journey for us. And, and yeah, I, I'm very happy, yeah, thankful for NetAcad and, the, and the, all the um, training that they've, they've done, especially in countries like Latin America, which really need that support from big Cisco, big companies like Cisco to be able to take this information, to be able to take this uh, technology back to Latin America and hope, uh, you know, get people into new, new uh, development opportunities. Oh, my Cisco ecosystem has been interesting from, you know, being part of the networking academy to then graduating and actually founding my own company that does work around, around Cisco, like, you know, reselling Cisco hardware, route switch, wireless, all that stuff. And now for the past, I'll say six years, being one of the biggest followers of DevNet and doing a lot of programmability and a lot of, uh, you know, re uh, projects around innovation that we use the training that we get from DevNet and apply that to real world challenges that customers are facing. That's why I'm actually really excited to see that now Networking Academy is also embracing that because it's gonna open a lot of the new opportunities, a lot of new innovations from the people that are all, uh, already training this technology from Netacad. And now they're gonna bring going to the, uh, you know, to customers and understanding their challenges and be able to solve that with some of the technologies and some of the innovations that Net, uh, DevNet is also uh, showing. For me, for example, as a business owner, this is really special because now the customer is demanding more and more innovation and they're doing that with technologies like Python. They're doing, they're asking innovation with uh, doing integrations with WebEx teams, with doing stuff around the uh, uh, computer vision using Meraki wireless cameras. So now for me as a business owner, having the possibility of getting not only people training networking, but people training developing technologies that apply to networking te uh, technologies, it's actually crucial because it reduces the learning curve and it allows me to go uh, more quickly to the market with a new solution on top of Cisco that uses uh, programmability technologies like you know the ones that you have in DevNet. So it's 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 been it's been amazing to see the whole journey from being part of Netacad, being able to found my own business, being part of the DevNet, and then being able to actually tie all of that, bringing solutions to the market. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's been pretty good for sure. And um, every time Susie Wee gets on stage, she mentions you as her favorite developer. So do you want to have a message for Susie today? Well, I'm, I'm basically her biggest fan. Susie's, her passion, her passion for Cisco, her passion for programmability, for her passion for everything that she communicates. It's, it's something for sure, a role model to follow. And I'm, again, her biggest fan. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to come back to everybody that's that's here today. Um, someone we haven't heard from yet um, is uh, is Juan David. So let's again, we promised you a, a telenovela. We, we're not allowed to uh, stream in Spanish because, you know, Cisco.com is always in English, but we're, we're going to give you that flavor. So Juan David, we, we're hearing a lot about students and uh, university years and training. What happens after graduation? Tell us what it's like to work at Cisco and what your journey has been like? Well, I also did study at the university. I went through the CCNA courses, the NetAcad program and all that. So uh, I can relate to the whole thing, right? Now working at Cisco uh, and having a territory as wide as the US uh, for the partner organization, it's, it's been great. I gotta say, when I, when I was joining Cisco, 
one of the, I remember like about three years ago, because I left for about two years to another software company, but I just, I couldn't wait to get back. So when I was trying to get back, uh, when I got this job, I, I remember my conversation with my boss and she said, well, we're really looking for somebody with a DevOps background. And I was like, well, this is a networking engineering, but that's me. I have all this background on, on, of course, on networking engineering, but I also like to dabble with some Python scripting. And I also like to, well, my, my degree project for university was uh, hundreds of lines of code of, of Visual C++ all the way back then for image processing and stuff like that. So I was like, that's me. Give me the chance to show that this is what I like to do. So my message to, to everybody out there is Cisco is an amazing company to work for. We not only want your skills, we want your culture. So if you're into DevNet, if you're into programming or developing, showcase that out there. Put your GitHub up, uh, start telling people what you're doing. If you're developing games, show them out there, tweet about it, because we're looking for that type of uh, skill sets that is gonna help us take uh, our relationship with all of our customers to the next level through programmability. Uh, as far as the culture goes, uh, when I joined Cisco, when I rejoined Cisco about three years ago, I was a channel to see for a very small territory, Orlando and Tampa, so Central Florida. And it quickly grew because I was the person in my team that had that extra interest in programmability beyond what the rest of the folks had. So for my manager and for my SE director in corporate America, it's very easy when you're gonna handpick somebody to do a job that matches what they've already been doing, it's a no brainer. So they said, well, we don't even need to interview for this because David's been playing around with this thing for two years. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we need now a role that matches DevOps, that matches this DevNet type of personality. That's him. There's, there's really no other way. So being in the, in the whole NetAcad and having that flavor for programmability has helped me not only get my job back at Cisco, but also maintain that job and move further out to where I started in Orlando and Tampa and now covering the whole US. And who knows where, where, where this is gonna end if I keep down that path of pro programmability, right? It really does open uh, the door for you. So we're so happy to be part of your journey as you continue to grow your career and as you keep your skills up to date. I also see that you're wearing your DevNet Create shirts and you have your DevNet hat. So do you wanna tell people what you did at DevNet Create this year? It was fun. Um, I do a lot of coding in my, my spare time. And it was funny because at DevNet Create, they're all, we're always looking for those skills that are kind of out of the ordinary. Of course, we want your script that manages networks and that connects ICE to DMAC or whatever it is that you're working on. That's great. But the one that actually got picked on was an Android game that I developed called Color Match, where uh, by adjusting red, green, and blue sliders, you have to match a circle that is it's gray, so right in the middle. You have to move it to match the color of the background. It's a very simple game, but what was interesting about it is it was a single player game. And because of a publisher subscriber model with a free pops up service that I found on the web, I could make that interaction with that game multiplayer and cloud based. And it took me about maybe 10 extra lines of code, literally 10 lines of code. And now my game became a very silly one player app where the player would probably get bored of it rather quickly into a very engaging multiplayer uh, online session where now you can have like my whole family, we were all playing together all on our phones trying to beat each other uh, up in, in the timing of matching the color. So it was an amazing, uh, it was an amazing uh, leveraging of the, of the cloud technologies with just 10 lines of code because it was really all in the background. All you have to do is call the free service and they'll do all the, the overhaul for you. But just learning how to harness that information that's out there on the web already that can help you make a silly game and catapult it into a full-blown operation or a very silly script that you've been working on creatively in your own computer and put that uh, in a production environment. It's taking that extra step of, of finding out what's out there, leveraging the DevNet resources, um, familiarizing yourself with the concepts, and very importantly, cementing those skills into a certification. Um, so I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about that, Sylvia, a little bit too, but that's absolutely important because that's what's going to, excuse the, the pun, it's going to certify that what you're doing, uh, that, that your skill sets are valuable and are valid for what the market needs out there. 
That is fantastic advice. And we always get so many questions about what exactly should I be studying? Where do I get started? So I want to go back to Jose Pablo and talk about how do people get started? We've talked about Medicaid a lot. We're talking about Cisco certifications. We're talking about working at Cisco. But if someone is just wondering how to get started, where do they go? And is it for people of all ages? Yeah, great question. So first of all, you can go to uh, www.netacad.com. That is actually our, uh, our website, our platform for uh, education, where you can actually uh, join there and start uh, looking at some of the courses that are available for you to start with a very introduction of those uh, uh, top first courses that can give you an idea where do you want to specialize. Maybe you want to go to cybersecurity, maybe you are interested in, in programming and you want to learn a little bit more about Python because you hear about that and you want to learn a little bit more about it. Or, or maybe you are interested in all these new certifications that we recently announced about the DevNet Associate and what is all that opportunity that that will bring in the future. So, so this is the first way to start. Also from there, you can find an academy locator that is actually an, a, a tool that can give you information of which institutions in your area are actually networking academy at this point, so that you can start having an, uh, either a phone number or a web page where you can go there and look what are some of the programs that they offer in your region, uh, so that you can start then continue with the education, with your process of learning and uh, certifying yourself to be prepared for this future that we're talking about. There is such a great crew here. I'm so grateful that everyone agreed to come and speak about the work you're doing with DevNet because you know DevNet is um, relatively new compared to the teams that you've all been representing and working with. So I really, really appreciate this um, collection of experts that's here today. To the audience, I want to say you have the opportunity to ask questions, so please send in your questions. Anywhere you're watching, you can go in and, and add a question, look for the hashtag Cisco chat to see where else we're streaming. And we want to get now into um, talking about where is Brazil? We're talking about Latin America and this has a Spanish flavor. Where is Brazil? And I want to say uh, we have greetings and a special message from our friends in Brazil. They're busy right now planning Cisco Connect, which is going to happen the first week of October. So if you are in Brazil and you want to learn more about DevNet programmability and great Cisco technology, make sure you're following at Cisco do Brasil. Go to the uh, Cisco.com Brazil webpage and um, do a search for Cisco Connect Brazil. There is a lot happening there. Brazil has the Innovation Center in Rio de Janeiro, and they, they are planning a great event for partners and customers and um, a wonderful programming community there. So if you look, if you look for the hashtag Cisco chat, you'll see that we do have special messages from our friends in Brazil. Um, I can't ever forget about Brazil, as you can tell. So um, next, we want to go to some questions from the audience. And Jose Pablo, we're going to go back to you, and then I'd like to give everyone else an opportunity to answer this question. Um, it really has to do around um, certifications, starting with Netacad, yeah, and, and of course, uh, the levels beyond that, and languages, programming languages. So I'd like to go and give everyone here an opportunity to talk about what programming languages should someone be learning um, if they're just getting started, or if they want to take their career to the Perfect. next level. Excellent. In, in the case of Netacad, the most important at this point that we are actually pointing to our students and to our instructors is Python. So actually, you can go and, and, and enroll in, this, in the self-enroll course, self-pace, on Python Essentials. That is the, the first uh, starting point for you if you want to start learning Python. But also, we have other courses that are uh, developed by a partner uh, uh, for Netacad that is the C and C++ courses, where we have two levels, one associate and one professional level for those two uh, important also programming languages. But the one that we are highlighting the most and that we think is, is the, the, the most important also for our emerging technology workshops that we have been using and co-developed with DevNet uh, community is Python. So that's uh, the one in the case of Netacad that we really recommend the most uh, for you to start learning and, 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 and jumping in and start learning on that one. Uh, Jose Orin, 
What about you in terms of what your company is working on? Yeah, as, as Jose Paulo said, probably Python is the number one language for a start. So if you're doing network programmability, you'll have a lot of Python libraries you can use. Let's say Cisco has, for example, libraries for network automation with PyATS. Uh, you have Genie, which is also a very good Python library. So it's, it's the number one language to start for sure. And then after that, you gotta start jumping other uh, chips. You gotta start doing JavaScript if you're gonna go do something in, in front end. Uh, you gotta do you know other languages like for example Go if you're gonna do more backend. So there's a lot of possibilities, but I'll say uh, absolutely that the first language to start with is Python. It's an easy language to understand. It's an easy language to read. So it's, it, and it has a lot of documentation and it has a lot of libraries that already support uh, Cisco products. Uh, for example, my company recently uh, contributed with Cisco to develop a new Python SDK for DNA Center, which makes it a lot easier for developers to start working with DNA Center. So you can just, you know, go to your terminal, do pip install DNA Center SDK and you get that library. Or you can go ahead and do pip install WebExteam SDK and you get that uh, SDK library for Python and start working, uh, you know, be more, more quick to develop solutions on top of these Cisco technologies. So yeah, I mean, if you, if you don't know programming at all or you're new to this, definitely go to the, uh, to the DevNet site, to developer.cisco.com, go to the uh, courses that Netacat has around Python and uh, just, you know, just uh, take the leap and, and do it. It's, it's easy. David? Hola. I'm, I'm back to Colombia mode now. I got my Colombian shirt. <laughs> I'm doing the same as Sylvia. Uh, but this is, the, this is the only wardrobe change I, I have, I promise. So I'm going to absolutely agree with Jose and what, what's been said so far. I would say take it as a maybe a two-step approach. The first, well, actually, yes, two-step approach after you figure out what you want to do. One of the coolest ways or one of the best ways for me when I learned was I had a goal in mind. I had this very silly project I was thinking of. Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. And uh, so Python is definitely a foundation. So I'm going to agree with that. After you have had some sort of foundation on Python, Python is going to be very easy very easily help you get that goal or that idea that, that's probably in your brain. I wonder if I can automate this or I wonder if I can grab this data and manipulate it in, the, in a way that does something for me or for somebody else. Python might, might want to get you there. And then now we get to the second step. After you've uh, kind of done all the bulk of the work, think, how are you going to show that? If I have a Python script, I cannot call my mom and say, hey, mom, mommy, Look at, this, look at this really cool thing I just did on Python. Can you please install Python and, and run this thing for me? Probably not gonna fly. Or if you wanna show 100 friends, maybe a web interface might be the way to go. Hey guys, go to this website and look at this cool thing I did. So Python's running in the background, but you may, like, like Jose said, you may wanna go to Node.js, JavaScript. If you wanna just have people, hey, why don't you download this app and check out this really cool thing I did, it's free. Go ahead and check it out and give me feedback. You might wanna learn some Java and do it on Android or go to Swift. Um, so that second step, it, it's going to depend on exactly what you want to come up with. It doesn't have to be big. I mean, we see apps all, uh, out there in the, in the app store that are fully blown. Those guys have developer teams that, uh, you know, th it takes weeks, months of development. They, they have years of experience. You don't, need to, you don't need to boil the ocean that way. Start with a small project, get feedback, and that's going to be the best way to learn. Uh, at least that's how it, how it happened for me. So I'm hoping that that message kind of resonates, right? Pick something simple, uh, go at it, use Python in the back end, and maybe show it, showcase it. It depends on, depending on what it is. It could be a web interface, it could be an app, whatever you want it to be, um, and you'll be good to go. And of course, leverage DevNet. Leverage all the DevNet content that we have out there that's 24-7 uh, uh, you know, available to you in the palm of your hand. So just go ahead and harness it. Thank you for mentioning all that content on DevNet. And um, I know we're getting excited and getting ready for Cisco Live Latin America, but I did want to remind everyone that we are talking about International Programmers Day. So 
representing Europe, as you can see. Um, and I, I want to make sure that everyone goes to developer.cisco.com automation to see what people are already contributing from the community around the world. So as you're studying, as you're trying to figure out maybe what you want to specialize in, take a look at what people are already sharing. Again, that's developer.cisco.com slash automation. And now I'd like to do another round of questions for our, our panel about what Cisco technologies interest you most. Uh, now with the new certifications, we're going to be able to specialize and get certified in different Cisco technologies. I know I have a lot of collab people here, so you can talk about collab, but also let me know what other Cisco technologies you're interested in. Let's go to um, Jose Pablo in Lima and Cynthia. So I think those uh, some other cool technologies that are out there is actually IoT, uh, where we uh, in NetAcad has also invested uh, in creating uh, very cool courses on uh, IoT. Uh, so IoT is not only uh, about uh, adding sensors uh, and, and creating some innovative ideas that are actually uh, uh, the start of all this innovation and digitization that is happening right now, but it's also important to keep a, an eye on the security of that. So, so you have to make sure that even though you want to create a new a system that is actually uh, automation uh, is doing uh, bringing automation to your home or bringing automation to your uh, to a uh, to a process to a factory or whatever, you have to think about security. So that's why uh, we div uh, very recently launched the uh, IoT security course that also brings that into mind to remind our uh, developers and people that are developing these new technologies around IoT that remember that security is also crucial, it's very important to keep in mind when you are developing this type of, of cool technologies. And uh, in terms of, of uh, programmability and all that is happening around that, uh, that's uh, another cool thing that is happening and we are bringing this into all our courses. Uh, the CCNA is bringing automation, uh, and we are also bringing that through the workshop that I mentioned before, and all the partnership that we have now with DevNet. I, I would like to say something also, uh, and technology, uh, a Cisco solution that I'm really passionate about is collaboration, and I, I can mention WebEx Teams. I think it's really easy to connect, and also you can create and develop in WebEx Teams. Uh, if you go to developer.cisco.com, you can go to Star Now and also learn how to create chatbots here. And this week, with Jose Pablo and other uh, Cisco and, and other companies, we were in a working group uh, with mining companies. And with uh, the support of Altus, mm -hmm. we created a bot a chatbot called Jose Carlos to get access to information about mining project in the south of our country, in Moquegua. So this is very important for people to know more about their regions and more about what the government and the companies are doing. That, that is fantastic. And I see Jose wants to talk about this in his nice Altus shirt that he's wearing. Uh, so to tell us more about it. it. It comes full circle, basically. So now we're, I'm a NetAcad graduate that is also contributing with NetAcad and doing projects with NetAcad. So it, it makes me really proud, honestly. It's, it's, a good, it's a good project and we're actually really excited to be able to contribute with that. And as Cynthia said, I mean, it's, it's, it's good to use WebEx Teams technology to create bots and make it easier for users to get information that otherwise might be a bit complicated. So uh, with, with Cisco, with all the Cisco technology that you have, you can leverage this information and make it easier for the users to start uh, consuming information or getting uh, new, new things to do their day-to-day -day work. To your um, original question of what technologies interest me the most, it's kind of complicated for me because I, I basically run a business that does uh, you know, uh, implementations or development work on top of Cisco. So I always say my company that if it has, it's, it's from Cisco and it has an API, it's a technology that I'm interested in. So from, as Cynthia said, WebEx Teams and all the powerful stuff that you can do on WebEx Teams from DNA Center, which is 
a great platform to do development from Meraki, which you can leverage that cloud technology, that networking cloud technology, and again, do a lot of integrations. Contact center, for example, the Cisco contact center is very dear and near to my heart. You can do a lot of integrations and you can actually improve a lot of the customer experience doing development on top of uh, Cisco contact center. But you can also go to you know, the data center and do work on top of Nexus devices or ACI. So for me, and yeah, this has been my job for the past six years, if it has an API and it's from Cisco, it's something that really interests me. It's kind of hard because now Cisco has APIs in every single product. So it's, it's kind of hard to keep you know, track of every single thing. But again, what I do, and honestly, that's the, my, my number one recommendation for people, it's go to DevNet, go to developer.cisco.com. If, again, if it's from Cisco and it has an API, the documentation, the labs, the sandboxes are in DevNet. And it's somewhat easy to get started. You can, you know, understand the technology, understand the APIs, and leverage that knowledge to do uh, custom solutions or drive innovation in your customer. And next, we have to go to the, the collab guy, David. But if anyone out there wants to get my attention, you know, the, the fastest way to do it is to tweet using hashtag DevNet. Today, you can use hashtag Cisco Chat. Make sure you tweet what Jose just said. If it's from Cisco and has an API, it's a technology I'm interested in. So I'm going to say that again because I love that. If it's from Cisco and has an API, it's a technology I'm interested in. I want to see those tweets come in. Jose wants to say something else. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to register that as you know as my motto, I'm a, as my lemas, as we said in Latin America. So. Yeah, it's, it's that. If, if it's from Cisco and has an API, it's an, a technology I'm interested in. <laughs> wow, okay. David, do you have a motto of your own? No, but I have a meme for, for you, man. You know that Drake meme where he's like, no, and then something that he's like, yeah. That, you should put that and make your own meme. So no API, no Cisco, I don't want to hear about it. And then you got Drake listening and paying attention if there's an API and Cisco's in it. So I, I'm going to make that meme and I'm going to send it to you. I know Sylvia's going to retweet that thing up the, <laughs> in, in four directions. So it'll, it'll become a thing. We're going to make you famous, man. All right, Collab Guy. I'm looking at the camera like you told me to, not at the screen, because we want to make eye contact. We want to use technology the way um, it really helps us feel like we're in the same room, right? So. What what do you like besides collab? What do I like besides collab? I love enterprise networking. Enterprise networking is what I've been focusing on, you know, my whole career. And uh, now I do have a programmability focus for enterprise networking. So a lot of the things that I'm passionate about are DNA Center. And how DNA Center is, if you guys are not familiar with DNA Center, it's really the, let's say, the enterprise networking controller. And um, it is really an automation platform for the network. So it allows us to control, manage, uh, deploy the network. And it provides something really cool called assurance that allows, think of it as if you had a time machine that allowed you to go back a few days and figure out what happened when there was some sort of wireless connectivity issue or wire connectivity issue in the network and the users had a challenge there, but they don't have it now. So when you talk to them in the water cooler, they say, well, I used to have a problem, but it's good now, but it, it was pretty bad back then. We had the precedent and he couldn't connect. Those things are a thing of the past. Now we can go back and with this thing called assurance that provide, that's provided by DNAC or DNA Center, we can go back in time and take a 360 view of what happened exactly and what the problem was. And that's all based on uh, stuff like machine learning, artificial intelligence, and of course, keeping a record of everything that happened with the network in the past you know, 14 days or so. So coupling that with APIs of other products like security that maybe tells us if there was a, sec a security breach or somebody had uh, unauthorized access, or maybe with WebEx Teams, like, like we were talking about before, where we can just maybe notify you on WebEx Teams when things are, are happening before you, we even get a call from a frustrated user. That's, those are the things that, passion, that I'm very passionate about. 
enterprise networking at a level that helps us humans understand and interact better with the network because that's the way we interact with each other. Uh, and so having that up, utmost 100% experience for everybody through automating enterprise networks out there, that's what I've been always passionate about. And it's really cool because it's kind of like the baseline and it connects to all the other architectures, data center, collab, security, you got it. There's enterprise networking right there at the base. I'm so glad to hear you say that because when you go to the DevNet zone, you, you see all these technologies. So even if you're more familiar with one, you know, you have the opportunity to learn about others. Um, so we're getting, I just want to make sure that everyone knows we're getting a lot of questions from the audience. You can keep sending in questions. A question we got is, today is not International Programmers Day. That's September 13 and it's September 12th. Well, in some parts of the world, it is already September 13. So now I'm representing Asia Pacific, where it is September 13 already. So uh, happy International Programmers Day to everybody out there. And of course, we're going to keep the conversation going. And another thing I wanted to mention is we talked about programming languages and we heard Python a lot. We also want to talk about other languages, which you know, like right now we're speaking English, right? We have an invitation from the Cisco Champion team to, to join the Cisco Champion program. You will see later on when uh, nominations um, and, and uh, you know, become available so that if you're not a Cisco Champion already, you can join that program. You can make friends who are interested in Cisco technologies and DevNet from around the world. So, you know, that's really worth looking into if you're interested in making like-minded friends from around the world. And another um, announcement that you'll see more about later is that we're looking for bloggers from around the world. So the folks that run the Cisco Champion program also want to make sure that we're featuring people who are blogging about Cisco. And you can do that in any language. Last year, I had the opportunity to be one of the judges reviewing the blogs that were submitted. And uh, I was able to review the blogs um, that were submitted in Portuguese and French and Spanish. So you can write about Cisco. You can write about DevNet in your own language. And we want to read you. And we want to make sure that we share that. So let's go to Jose Bogarin, who is a Cisco champion, to see if he wants to tell us more about his experience with the Cisco champion program. It, it's it's actually a great program because you're able to interact with people all over the world. So, you know, from, as you said, Asia Pacific, from Europe, from Latin America, from the States, from Canada. So it's a very good community. And not only that, but it's a very friendly community. Actually, I sent a question yesterday that around, I'll say 10 p.m. And I got like 10, 20 responses when I you know, wake up uh, today because people from Asia Pacific, from Europe were actually responding to the question that I had yesterday about the network monitoring tool. So it's a very friendly community. They're super helpful. And I, you know, I can recommend to all of the people here that if you're interested in Cisco and you're interested in being part of this community, definitely the Cisco Champions is a good program to be a part of. And you learn a lot, you interact with people all over the world and your knowledge will definitely increase quite a bit. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, this is going to become increasingly important as the new DevNet certifications become available because already study groups are forming and people are helping each other study for the new DevNet certifications which will be available next February. So um, we are getting a lot of questions about certifications and, and where people should invest their time studying. It keeps coming back to NetaCAD. So Jose Pablo, if you can tell us more about the, the work that NetaCAD is doing to get ready for the DevNet certifications and how you're going to help um, the students, the NetaCAD students get DevNet certified. Um, there's a lot of interest in that. Yeah, so we're doing a lot of things. First of all, we started uh, some years ago with the introduction of the emerging technology workshops so that we can start changing the minds of our instructors and changing the mind of our community so that they can start bringing this conversation uh, uh, to the table or to the events. Uh, so that was one of the first steps where, where we start. Uh, then we start uh, the addition of, of courses, introdu introductory courses, uh, all like the programming courses that I mentioned before, uh, and, and, and how we are uh, starting to bring in more and more of these technologies 
Uh, with emerging technology workshops, we have like one that is related to, to uh, WebEx teams and how you can interact through APIs with that tool. Uh, the other one is uh, related to network programmability. And the, the last one is the new one that's going to be released uh, late this uh, month is our model-driven programmability. That is a, 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 a great uh, opportunity for our networking engineers to start bringing all these concepts and changing the minds and changing the way they work and the way uh, they uh, also educate our in the new and uh, the future generation of the uh, networking professionals. So that's uh, that's the journey. And the other cool thing is that uh, the people that are here on the on the session that are NetAcad students or NetAcad instructors, they can actually join in with their NetAcad account to DevNet, so that they can be part of the community. And we are also doing a big uh, effort on bringing more and more. A, a people from our NetAcad community into DevNet as part of the of the work and, and part of, of connecting them to, uh, to to this demo. We we all think that we need to close this bridge of NetAcad as the uh, um, as as a program, the leading program in the industry for uh, uh, IT and DevNet as uh, the community of practice, the great place where they can find resources and continue their ongoing education in the future. So if we join the two of them, I think we can actually have a great opportunity for them in the future. That's that's a great message. And Jose, Pablo, and Cynthia, we know you're in the middle of a, a training event today. So thank you so much for joining us. Any final words for our audience? Just enjoy your, your day. Happy programming day. And don't forget to log in to NetAcad and also to log in into the developer.cisco.com with your Cisco ID so you can learn a lot about programmability. Yeah, and happy Programmers Day to everyone. And, and as I said before, and this is a very powerful message to all our networking community, you have to think yourself as a programmer as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the work you do for so many um, in Latin America and around the world. We know that that's a team that works together really, really well. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go back to um, Jose Bogarin who, uh, to see what his final thoughts would be uh, on International Programmers Day and any special messages you might have for the audience. Yeah, so uh, as, as you said, well, uh, at least in Cisco, Susi Wee is the one that leads this DevNet program and the whole that, uh, programmability within DevNet. Susi always said that everyone is a programmer. So you, you have to be, I mean, I understand you might have fear because, oh, I'm not networking engineer or I'm not infrastructure engineer, but you can be a programmer and it's, it's not that hard. You just go, for example, to DevNet, you have a lot of resources there where you can start learning and you have a lot of information, and soon enough you'll see that you are a programmer. So again, following Susie's uh, words, you truly are a programmer, and this World International Programmers Day, it's actually your day. You just have to get started, and again, leveraging, De leveraging DevNet, using Python, it's stuff that will definitely improve your work-to-work -work day, because now you can automate stuff and make it easier for you to start you know, doing um, more work with less effort because now you leverage uh, technology like programming languages to automate your day-to-day -day work. So my last thought is, well, NetAcad is a very valuable program and it's a program that actually, if you're starting in the networking area, definitely go to NetAcad. You'll get you up to speed quick with networking concepts. If you are at you know, season old, 20, 25 years infrastructure networking engineer, start with DevNet. You have a lot of resources in DevNet. And again, it's easy for you to start that. So please leverage the different Cisco programs from NetAcad to DevNet to learning at Cisco. And that will definitely help you in your career. Thank you so much, and um, I would love to see the work that you're doing uh, with so many people around the world, Jose. You really are uh, the, really a favorite for our community, and we appreciate you. So you. let's go to, uh, to Juan David and see what his final thoughts are for the audience. 
All right, guys. Well, thank you. Muchas gracias. Obrigado to everybody that joined this, this uh, live stream. Thank you, Silvia, for hosting and uh, being so gracious and doing so many wardrobe changes. And you're like a magician. You're like quickly changing in and out. My last thought is, um, so companies are looking to treat their customers better. Everything is customer experience now. One of the best ways to get there is through automation and programmability. At a, at a partner level, which is what I interface with in the partner organization, partners are always asking me how they can differentiate themselves from the competition and treat their customers better. Um, automation is the key. Their directors know it, their VPs know it, the CEOs, they know it, and they're always looking for people with those skill sets. So now at a personal level, differentiate yourself through DevNet. Literally, get the DevNet hat. You're going to have to come to one of our parties, which are awesome fun, by the way. So you can get one of these, so you can get all the cool DevNet stuff that we have for you. Join our community. Last time I checked, we were over half a million members. So join the community, have fun with us, code with us, and you never know where that might go at a personal level and in your own career. People will start singling you out as the code guy, as the programmability guy. Oh, you're my DevOps guy. Become the go-to guy or go-to girl or go-to person that everybody looks up to when it comes to automating things because that's what we're always, what we're always trying to do in this corporate America world or cor corporate world, if you will. Um, and you'll start wearing that badge with pride. So my sister says that DevNet should be called DaveNet <laughs> because I'm, the go I I'm known as a DevNet person in my family, in my circle of friends, everywhere. So wear that DevNet hat. Uh, join us as the community, be friendly with us, we're going to be very friendly with you, we're going we're gonna to equip you with all the skill sets that you want, start simple, get that idea and start coding through, the, you know, and going through the DevNet material, code that little project that you have in your mind somewhere, and uh, publish it. Tell people what you did and start turning heads and uh, advance your career that way. It has worked for me and I know for a fact it could very well work for you. So thank you again and uh, this is Colombia saying goodbye. Chao, Silvia. Gracias. Gracias por todo. And, um, wait, 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 wait. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. Happy birthday, Silvia. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so I know much. it's tomorrow, but happy birthday. It is tomorrow, and that's how I always remember that September 13 is International Programmers Day. So join us. Thank you so much, everyone who joined today. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's see where you are a year from now. I won't forget. So let's check in and see what you have done to take your career to the next level. You have a whole year. Happy International Programmers Day.